Um, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So good afternoon. Thank you for attending this our uh, CFPR lunch seminar today. Dr. Gu Xiaolong will talk about her most recent study about the parenting in post uh, in post reform uh, China. So Dr. Gu Xiaolong is a research fellow in Asian Research Institute at the National University of Singapore. And uh, her research is mainly about uh, um, on children, uh, on social, sociology of childhood and youth, migration studies, family sociology, education, uh, China's political economy, and the mixed method research. Uh, Dr. Gu Xiaolong is an expert on uh, educational issues of children and, and uh, adolescents in China. So she's not only uh, written widely on this topic, she is currently also the guest editor for two special issues on shifting variation of children in Asian and global. Um, so today her talk is about uh, parenting for success, the value of children and the intensive parenting in post-reform China. So let's welcome Dr. Bu. Thank you, Dr. Ding, um, for sharing the session and thank every uh, thank you to everyone who uh, has uh, joined us now uh, let me share the screen first can you see it now uh, yeah so okay okay, good. okay thank you um first of all um let me uh Today, my presentation uh, includes two parts mainly. Uh, the first part, I will introduce the Valley of Children project that I have been uh, doing for the past three or four years. Um, the second part will illustrate um, the Valley of Children study um, with an empirical case in China. Um, so um, the Valley of Children project, um, is a project I've been doing in my postdoctoral research um, in Asia Research Institute. I will first acknowledge Professor Yang and Asia Research Institute for their enormous support uh, to make this happen. It started um, as an international conference organized by Professor Yang and me in 2018 and has grown into two special issues that are out recently out uh, this year. Um, the first one in child indicators research um, and the second one in current sociology, um, we have uh, the online first version out. If you are interested um, in these two special issues, you can uh, contact me in private um, messages or uh, in email about the topic about these um, two special issues. Now, why do we need to study the value of children? Um, actually, the, the, the position of children and how they are uh, treated in relation to the family, to the uh, state, to the national uh, economy, to um, the whole society actually can be of great uh, significance. And, act, uh, and the answers to these questions actually could provide important insights in addressing a set of acute demographic and social challenges in Asian societies, such as um, extended periods of um, um, below replacement fertility, population aging, uh, ever intense educational competition in rising social inequalities. Um, before um, going to the empirical case, let me um, briefly introduce the conceptual uh, frameworks to study value. Um, value is such a every such an every everyday um, vocabulary that we use it in different ways, actually uh, in different conceptual schemes. So in this article, in the introductory article to the social, uh, current sociology um, special issue, I discussed um, 
uh, explicitly three ways, three approaches of studying the value of uh, studying value in social sciences. The first uh, definition we can say value is defined as um, the value worth, the intrinsic, um, the intrinsic worth of an object. So, if we follow this um, definition, there are assumptions underlying it. First, value is something inside the object or the entity that you study is determined uh, pre-existing the, the, the evaluator's subjectivities and the contextual environment. And it's quantifiable and imputable. Um, in, the child, in the literature, studying child, the, the value of children, there is a school of um, uh, study, a school of uh, researchers in line with the new, new home economics. They use this approach to study the value of children in relation to fertility. So in this um, research scheme uh, by Howard Baker and uh, a number of his uh, colleagues, the children are conceptualized as both the product, the production goods and consumer durables that simultaneously impose costs to the family economy and parental productivity, as well as yield short-term or long-term utilities. So the value of children is calculated uh, through parents uh, weighing between the marginal sacrifices and satisfactions. And this school of uh, research has been popular in um, ec economics. And um, of course, um, there are some criticism uh, uh, um, about this approach, in particular in relation to their conceptualization of, of the child as a fertility figure without uh, any um, contextual characteristics of his of its own. And the second way to study value is actually uh, what I call the value as a value statement. So a value here, value is an accountable noun. A value is a, a statement or a mental representation of the worth or the importance of an object. So opposite to the first definition, actually, value here is defined as a subjective evaluation of the importance of, of some entities and, and or the objects you study. Um, the characteristics of this uh, definition include that uh, we can study value from the collective or the individual levels. And at the individual level, it is used as a social psychological mechanism uh, that help to explain the motivation behind behaviors. In, uh, in the literature studying the value of children, um, we also have a prominent uh, group that uses this definition to study how uh, prospective how parents the value of children is related to their fertility uh, intentions. Um, the so-called VOC studies in demography in the 1970s um, originated from a theoretical framework by Hoffman and Hoffman in 1973. They provide they outlined nine potential value items. Uh, that children may add to parents' lives, ranging from psychological and social needs to economic utilities. And this paved way for a cross-national VOC study conducted in a number of um, Asian societies like Singapore, um, Taiwan, Indonesia, Japan, um, uh, as well as uh, Germany and, and the US. So uh, this first wave of um, VOC studies was mainly uh, uh, conducted by uh, an institute, uh, an East-West Institute in Hawaii University. And this, sec uh, this VOC studies uh, has um, 
yielded information about how the transition from uh, instrumental valuation of children to emotional valuation, uh, uh, valuation of children um, as societies modernize. And in the early 2000s, actually, a, a second, uh, another cross-national uh, studies uh, a study conducted um, by led by a German uh, group, uh, a, a group of German demographers, um, Nock and Klaus, um, replicated the first round, yielding very similar um, uh, findings about the transition uh, across societies, uh, from instrumental value to children's uh, emotional value. The third uh, definition or approach that we can study value uh, is what I call the interpretive approach. Well, value here is defined as the resultant articulation of the worth or importance of an object upon a valuation process where the evaluator imagines ways and contingently reconstruct the worth or importance of the valued mediated by the social context. Um, in this uh, way of studying value, actually, um, the, the contextual information and the power positions uh, that the, va the, the valuator um, occupies act, uh, matters a lot. And it's widely used um, in, in, in qualitative studies. Uh, and I will give you an example of um, uh, Viviana Zalater's work on the pricing, uh, on pricing the priceless child, in which she traced the historical development of the industry of children's value, uh, insurance and explored the complex relationship between the human and market values of children, where she documented the emergence of a normative, normative child figure who is economically worthless but emotionally priceless. Um, I have to say that these three different concepts of value and the approaches towards value studies can have their own pros and cons and um, different um, researchers may have different orientations uh, towards the study. Now I move on to the second part of uh, my uh, presentation um, where I talk about this empirical case of China, uh, of the value of children uh, in relation to parenting in the, Ch in the Chinese context. So this study um, um, uh, in engages in a debate about social class and parenting. Um, as um, scholars in this field uh, would um, agree that actually this literature privileges a social class perspective um, uh, through a number of different mechanisms. So uh, social class affects parenting through, for example, parents' occupational positions, uh, which will shape their orientation towards autonomy or conformity in child rearing by Calm and his, uh, uh, and his colleagues. And the second mechanism uh, through class-based lifestyles and cultural, uh, cultural predispositions um, by Bourdieu and uh, uh, recently LaRue, uh, particularly in her book, Unequal Childhoods, she raised a, a theoretical model in which the middle class and the working class uh, uh, adopt two different cultural models in raising children. And which the middle class um, uh, model des described as the concerted cultivation, whereas the working class mo um, parenting model is described as the accomplishment of the natural growth. And the third mechanism that uh, uh, existing literature uh, um, pauses in relation to the the relation between cl class and parenting is the through social economic resources uh, that influence parental investment. Well, in this study, I try to question, uh, raise a question, is this social class model a universal one? Um, 
there are several reasons that we can problematize or question uh, this um, uh, dominance of the model. First of all, whether in the neo Marxist or in the neo Weberian tradition, social class is considered as a static system which can be neatly mapped into particular culture and behavior schematas. Um, which may not hold universally, especially when societies undergo tremendous um, social changes in a short period of time. Um, these neat patterns might not be the uh, case. Secondly, um, the relationship between um, class and parenting values um, empirically uh, has been uh, questioned by scholars working on the Chinese uh, case. Xiao Hong, for example, uh, using data from the World Value Survey in 1990, finds that the, co the causal link between occupational autonomy and parenting values um, in Western societies actually could not be replicated in her study of an urban Chinese sample. Um, to the, in, in, con uh, in contrast, she reveals that four men or supervisors, in fact, uh, in the factors uh, in working class, uh, actually, despite their uh, much, despite much flexibility in control at work, value autonomy the least and conformity the work the most, which she argues might be related to the command economies uh, that China was um, um, undergoing for decades during the Mao era. Likewise, using data from CFPS, Liu Anran and Yu Xie uh, report limited effect of family economic resources on parenting practices. And third, my own research, um, longitudinal qualitative research with Chinese uh, rural migrant families dispute this ideal of the accomplishment of natural growth in the, in chi among China's uh, um, working class. So in this study, I try to raise an alternative model of the value of children as an alternative to, uh, to, to social class uh, in shaping parenting behaviors. First, I, I raise five pro uh, hypotheses uh, to empirically test um, this idea. So first, I hypothesize that there rises the emotionally priceless child among Chinese families. Uh, this is of course based on literature in the VOC tradition, as well as uh, some recent uh, qualitative studies um, in um, either the only child urban families or in rural China uh, actually record the rise of emotion, the emotionally, uh, emotionally priceless child. And Yan Yunxiang, the anthropologist uh, working widely in uh, rural China, uh, uh, used the word um, descending feminism, so in which the, the, the development of children commands the central attention in family life. And the second hypothesis that I uh, uh, propose here is that children's education has emerged as an important parenting goal. Uh, this is related to uh, the cultural and institutional context in China in which meritocracy as an idea and the institutional arrangement of national examinations in ancient uh, civil, uh, civil examinations, um, and its modern equi equivalent of um, Gao Tao. And in relation to the, um, to the um, empirical fact that in uh, post-reform China, actually the returns of education has, uh, have grown uh, quite a lot. In uh, adding to the factor of the very in uh, social inequality, uh, high levels of social inequality in a population of 1.4 billion. Um, this ideal of uh, uh, pursuing education as a family social uh, mobility um, project is quite widespread um, in Chinese families. 
uh, in the, uh, the third hypothesis I proposed here is that um, parents' emotional value of children is positively associated with their intensive parenting behaviors. Uh, here, um, um, there's a literature on the transition of Chinese parenting from harsh parenting to parenting as the art of disposition as described by Teresa Kwang, an, anthropolo an anthropologist in Hong Kong, uh, where she describes parenting in urban Chinese families as a very, very, um, uh, very, very consuming effort. Uh, that um, involves long-term planning, tiny intervention and communications with children and constant emotion work. And the fourth hypothesis I uh, raise here is um, parents' a higher achievement value of children is associated with intensive parenting, which is more straightforward, especially considering the uh, a, a number of um, cultural ideas of learning and and parenting as training in, in, in the Chinese context. Last, I uh, propose that the family SES or social class and parental values may exert complementary effects on different dimensions of parenting. What we shouldn't be naive to, cons to assume that there's no uh, if, uh, no effect of family SES um, on parenting, but we also want to uh, study, uh, we want al also want to uh, test whether the parental values uh, can uh, affect parenting in different ways. Um, so I will skip this part. Uh, there are a lot of popular, po popular cultural texts you can study to um, understand more details about the parenting here. Now I'll move on to the uh, data and uh, methods part. So I'm using uh, China family panel studies uh, uh, to empirically test the, the hypothesis. Um, restricted the, the analysis to children aged between six, to, uh, six and 15 with valid information about parental value variables. And the final sample comprised about 2,700 uh, 2, observations. Um, now I move on to uh, introduce the key concept, uh, the, the, the operationalization of the two key concepts here, uh, the value of children indicators. Um, de I derived from uh, two sets of questions in the questionnaire. The first uh, set of question um, is derived from the question about reasons for raising a child. Uh, nine items of uh, reasons are given here. And uh, through factor analysis, uh, exploratory factor analysis, I subtracted, I subtracted two, um, extracted two value orientations, the emotional value and the instrumental uh, value. As you can see, statistics, um, the indicator uh, 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 are pretty good in, in terms of the, um, the um, validity of the measures. So through, um, through these questions, I generated to uh, I generated two variables indicating emotional and instrumental uh, values respectively by averaging the related items. I then constructed a dichotomous variable by subtracting the respondent's instrumental value score from the emotional value score with the negative um, values or zero. Uh, coded as zero and positive values as one, indicating higher emotional value. Likewise, the second um, value uh, uh, variable is derived from a set of questions asking uh, the importance of factors for children's future success to parents. Um, here, um, there are three factors related to family background and two, uh, uh, two factors related to individual achievement and effort. Uh, 
in a similar fashion, I uh, constructed a dichotomous variable by subtracting the values of the background uh, variable from that of the achievement variable. So in the end, um, the parenting, the two parenting uh, parental value variables are two dichotom uh, uh, two dichotomous variables, and I also in this study um, looked at a number of parenting measures. Uh, literature suggests that Chinese parents um, in the post-reform era practice a type of intensive parenting characterized by deliberate cultivation and training to raise successful children. However, this intensive uh, parenting model has its contextual specificities. Uh, specific, uh, First, um, it's overwhelmingly emphasizes children's performance in formal education, especially given the um, testing system, the national uh, testing system. And secondly, the uh, parenting model it primarily concentrates in the family space where parents mobilize, mobilize resources to develop children's academic capabilities rather than to participate in school management or decision-making. Uh, in the school level. So in this current study, I um, operationalized the intensive parenting um, construct through five indicators as shown here. Um, two of them, I, um, two of them, I measure the dimension of parental investment and the other three um, measured uh, measure the in parental involvement aspect of parenting. So um, the five measures include whether the child is enrolled in extracurricular tuition classes and the educational expenses that par the family paid for the in the last semester and parents' uh, supervisory role in daily life to, uh, to, to guide ch the child's education, including six questions uh, uh, regarding to their efforts uh, assisting children's study, including supervising homework, regulating TV exposure and time, and discussing school matters. I generated a composite score by averaging the six uh, items. And the next um, measure, uh, the next parenting measure is um, uh, from uh, the interviewer report, where the interviewer uh, assess throughout the process of the interview whether the parents are, uh, the parent respondent is um, taking initiative to communicate with the child. And last, the last um, measure is, um, ask, is from the question asking parents, um, uh, parents' response to, to the child's below expectation grades. So I coded the supportive measures to include those um, parent, uh, where parents contact teachers for help, encourage the child to work hard and providing extra support instead of punitive measures. Um, family SES is uh, measured by three indicators in this study. Um, including the father's education and family income per capita and whether the child has an urban hukou. These are very important um, indicators of um, um, family's background in contemporary China. And the study also controls a number of um, important demographic factors, including the child's demographic features, such as the gender only child status, uh, ethnicity, age, and the parents' uh, characteristics, uh, three parents' parent characteristics are also included. Whether the parent uh, resp responder was the mother and uh, whether they were born after 1978, that's the time of reform in China and the, their marital status. And last, um, I controlled for regional location. Now let's move on to the um, findings here. So um, first, um, the data suggests that actually uh, we 
empirically find that um, the, the emotionally priceless and educationally achieving child is widely popular among Chinese parents. As you can see from the figure here, on the left, uh, the bar shows that about 52% of parents prioritize emotional versus instrumental reasons as the motivation of childbearing, while only 15% report otherwise. And uh, on the right, approximately 70% uh, of parents uh, rate higher scores for the, ch uh, for the children's achievement uh, versus the family background as the important factors for their future success, while only less than 15% rate otherwise. Uh, of course, um, in, in, the, in some uh, figures not shown here, there are some correlation between uh, uh, family SES indicators and the parental values, but um, they are not so neatly um, um, mapped up as uh, imagined in the as proper, uh, proposed in the uh, family in the social class um, and parenting literature. Um, in the next uh, part, I want to briefly um, um, briefly introduce the social determinants of parents' value orientations. As you see here, figures 3A and 3B are, are show the um, results of uh, uh, logistic regression um, of uh, a set of um, uh, measures, including family SES, parents' demographic characteristics, and child characteristics uh, on the value of children. On your, uh, sorry, on the left, um, predicting the higher emotional value, we see that um, um, family, we see that family social economic status exerts significant impact. In particular, the likelihood of parents of urban hukou children rating higher emotional value. That is 1.39 times that of the rural parents and also family income per capita. Um, higher family in income per capita is related to higher uh, emotional value. And, and the only child also status is also positively correlated, um, as well as um, mothers tend to report higher emotional uh, value. On the right side, you see uh, the predictors of um, higher achievement value. As we can see, uh, a similar picture here. Among the family SES measures, higher parental education and higher family income per capita are positively correlated with achievement belief. Um, but none of the parent act characteristics exert significant impact. Um, the, uh, again, the only child uh, status is positively correlated to parents' higher uh, achievement value. Um, so now we want to understand uh, whether there is a relationship between the value orientations and the parenting practices. So um, this, in this table, I show the bivariate relationship here. Uh, I highlight two general trends. Across the board, evidence suggests that there is a strong relationship between parental, parental values and parenting practices. A higher emotional value and higher achievement value of children are positively correlated to more intensive uh, parenting practices. And second, the patterns are consistent between uh, emotion emotional value and achievement value. Um, it seems that parent, parents of value orientation towards their children have a direct bearing on how they interact and support children's education. But is this just a statistical fiction or it can be, re, uh, can be um, explained by other um, median team uh, mechanisms? 
So in the last step, I look at the um, multivariate relationship between um, fa uh, between family uh, between the value of children and the parenting behaviors. Uh, in particular, I am interested in share in comparing the effect of family SES and, and that of the parental values variables in shaping um, different dimensions of parenting behaviors. So in this uh, in this step of the analysis, I uh, estimated a series of uh, regression models on different child, uh, different parenting um, va variables, step-by-step. Uh, step. Um, I first enter family SES in the models and then followed consecutively the two uh, value variables and last, um, adding uh, um, family SES in the, in the picture, in the full model. So in this part, we want to see uh, if, if family SES unimportant to parenting practices, we should observe that the three um, measures, father's education, uh, family income, and family hukou status are significantly correlated with parenting behaviors. As we can see here, um, the data suggests that actually, indeed, especially the last, the, the family income per capita and urban hukou are positively correlated to the two measures of parenting in relation to investment. Um, that is in, in enrollment in private tuition and in educational expense. After, after, um, accounting for all other factors, including the parental value variables. Um, whereas the family, um, the, emo uh, the parental value variables, they are significant in separate models, in, in, in uh, separate models, but in the full model, their effect seems to have, seem to, have been explained by the family SES indicators. Whereas in the next three, um, for the next three outcomes, we see a very different picture. So when, uh, as we can see from here, the family SES indicators um, showed significant results when as when entered into the model separately, but in the full model, that effect has been um, reduced signif significantly. And for the last uh, parenting outcome, it actually uh, we sh we see a very little um, si significant um, relationships here. But if we look at uh, parental values. So for the uh, involvement, for parental involvement uh, indicators, we see that after entering uh, the, the parental value variables are significant um, core, core, core variables. And they actually, their effect has not been able to be fully accounted by family SES especially the effect of higher emotional value. As you can see, its result uh, remains significant in all the uh, three outcomes. So we see a complementary picture of uh, parenting, uh, of family SES and parental values in shaping uh, um, parenting behaviors in different ways. Um, now I move on to um, the final part. Um, so we, uh, in to sum up, um, the study is able to uh, confirm the hypo the five hypotheses related to parental values and uh, um, parenting in contemporary China. Um, we see that. Um, the emotionally priceless and educationally achieving child is popular among Chinese parents, and higher emotional value is related to uh, more intensive parenting behavior, and 
likewise for a higher achievement value. And the two sets of factors, family SDS and parental values are complementary in shaping different uh, dimensions of parenting. Uh, now I briefly uh, discuss um, the contributions. So this study actually demonstrates uh, the productive application of parental valuation as a new theoretical perspective in social stratification research. And uh, we uh, it used nuanced finding uh, regarding how family social uh, economic resources and parental valuation affect parenting uh, practices. And we also get a very uh, quite complicated and paradoxical trans uh, transformation of childhood and intergenerational um, relations in post-reform China. On the one hand, empirical evidence suggests there is a major shift in parents' value orientation in child rearing from underscoring instrumental considerations rooted in Confucianism towards developing to an international intergenerational bond and intimacy. However, we also see uh, the ideology which trumpets individual merits over family background remains robust as a cultural value for Chinese parents. It, uh, in a low fertility, for low fertility and rapidly, rapidly developing society, it gives rise to a mobility-driven parenting regime that sees the child as a site of intensive investment, investment for future success in a neoliberal society. Well, for parents, this balancing between the emotionality of child rearing and the regimented cultivation of children is actually quite stressful. As, um, uh, as many uh, studies of parenting uh, in anthropological works show, show. Likewise, for children, negotiate, negotiating a sense of autonomy uh, as emotionally valued beings and the expectations for their academic ac excellence is also likely subject and subject then to tremendous social pressure and parental surveillance and intervention. Um, policy implication wise, the study suggests family SES remain significant as a predictor and so policymakers can devise um, instruments in, uh, in terms of monetary and service support uh, to help low class uh, families. On the other hand, we also find that parenting practices are not rigidly de determined by family SES. So the possibility of eliminating parenting gaps between different groups by encouraging social values and attitudes that help child development is also something we can think of. Um, the study is limited in a number of ways. Um, first of all, it's across sectional data. Um, that might be possible with uh, possible with the issue of endogeneity, and, and also um, we can in future studies we can look at multi-level um, value um, interactions from the societal level to individual level, and third. Um, the study could not adequately access grandparents' parenting practice and values, which is actually an important um, aspect of Chinese family life. Grandparents are heavily involved. But the data of CFPS um, here, um, the, 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 par the grandparents' report of parenting behavior, uh, um, values and, and uh, beliefs are quite confusing. So in order not to uh, make it too complicated, I excluded them in the study in the beginning. In the future, uh, this is an um, important study to go forward. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I ran out of time. Thank you, Dr. Gu. Yeah, so uh, we have around the 15 minute discussion. So if you have any questions, you can post your question on a group chat uh, and or just raise your like a hand on the Zoom, then I can uh, go one by one. Okay, uh, I believe Shu uh, Hu uh, have a question. Yeah, so Shu um, Hu, please go. 
so would you like to ask your question on a uh, group chat or you can just speak up? Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Xiaorong, for the very rich presentation. And uh, I really enjoyed your talk. Uh, I, have, I have two comments uh, slash questions. The first one is about your second hypothesis. So in the second hypothesis, you said, there's a, uh, I mean, there's a, a children's educational achievement has emerged as an important parenting goal. Um, I'm wondering because, I mean, Chinese, uh, the, the, the Chinese, uh, um, so the emphasis on children's educational attainment has, has been high um, even before the modernization era. So, so I, I'm not sure if it's a newly emerged uh, parenting goal or has it always been uh, culturally valued in the Chinese society. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that. My second question is about uh, um, the, you, you said in, the, in one of the conclu concluding uh, slides that uh, you commented on the paradoxical um, finding or implication of, of your study. So you talked about uh, how parents and children, all of them, they are struggling with uh, du dual demands of, um, on the one hand, the emotionality of children. On the other hand, uh, the very high um, uh, value placed on educational achievement. I'm just wondering if this is unique or um, um, unique to China, or is it only paradoxical in the Chinese context? Because if you look at the middle class parenting and childhood in Western developed societies, we see the same thing. They, uh, on the one hand, children are valued uh, for their emotional, uh, emotional value. And then on the other hand, these middle class, highly educated parents, they are also engaging in intensive parenting, trying to push their children towards academic su success. So yeah, would, would like to hear your thoughts on this as well. Thanks. Thank you, Hushu, for the wonderful comments and questions. For the first one, um, yeah, I agree that emerge might not be the best wording for it. But what I wanted to emphasize is that um, Traditionally in China, of course, um, there is a um, culture of um, pursuing education as a family uh, social mobility uh, um, engine. But it's largely, uh, I would say, it's largely um, a, a kind of a pursuit in higher uh, family, F, higher SES uh, families, and especially um, it's also a gen there's a gender dimension for boys. So in, in the post-reform China here, I want to emphasize that parenting, um, uh, uh, education, children's education as a parenting goal is a quite universal pursuit for different families of different social strata and for children of different genders. And secondly, um, the paradoxical nature of uh, child rearing um, to balance between emotionality and uh, intensive parenting. Yes, I agree that uh, many other societies um, may have uh, show may have uh, show similar. Um, I guess this is a quite um, quite prevalent issue that um, modern parenting has to grapple with. <laughs> so you, on the one hand, you try to um, give the best to your children to boost up their future opportunities. But on the other hand, um, the children are regarded as vulnerable, emotionally dependent human beings. And um, yeah, I, I agree that it, it is uh, 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 an issue for many other societies as well. But for the Chinese society, I guess this emotional uh, children as emotional beings and who, whose emotional health, it's very important to consider. It's a quite new uh, phenomenon, I would say, <laughs> because traditionally 
harsh parenting is part of the story. Um, physical punishment and so on are very frequently used in parenting. Thank you very much. Um, do anyone have any other questions? Yeah, so I actually like also like a, uh, like a, uh, want to ask a, a very similar questions with uh, Shuhu because I also wonder like whether over the generation, the Chinese parenting uh, changes. Like uh, because uh, uh, like uh, here, so we actually uh, observed a very interesting phenomenon. I asked my students whether uh, when they are young, uh, they were young, or whether they came by their parents. Then they are all like NUS students. Then they say like, uh, yeah, like uh, like uh, we actually all came by the, by by parents. So they believe this is like a Chinese tradition. <laughs> yeah. So but like I told them, I have have. I actually haven't been like a, a physical <laughs> punished by my parents. So I believe like over the generation, like uh, uh, the parenting actually uh, changed uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, in, in China. So, uh, but uh, Dr. Gu, um, can I ask a question about uh, your data? So I find that there's um, um, uh, the data, your data show like, uh, the uh, parents are currently are uh, married. It's like a ninety-four percent like uh, parents are currently married. So I'm not sure like whether this is like a biased sample or not because it's quite a high number like percent like uh, the, the the is married parents right because uh -huh. <laughs> yeah some are they, them are single parents like some are like a uh, maybe like a uh, um divorced. So ninety-four to me is quite high. Then, uh, like you also find that like parents are currently married, and they are less likely to recognize the emotion value of children. So, how do you explain this? Uh, the, the results. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Dean. Uh, first of all, let me um respond to your comment about the generational changes, right? Actually, there's a very interesting paper in the in the special issue with current sociology by um, uh, Jie Yu Liu. Um, she uses um, li uh, life story, life history uh, interviews uh, of three generation uh, families, uh, urban families in China. So, in which she really finds she finds a lot of interesting uh, changes. In, in, in the Chinese families in terms of um, uh, child rearing. Uh, first, first of all, um, for, for grandparents' generation, for example, uh, and parents' generation, survival, uh, economic survival in China's very traumatic history has become a very important uh, aspect of family life. So parents, don't have, parents didn't have time for their children. And children's education uh, was regarded uh, related to their own, own natural endowment. It's not something that you want to push every child to pursue for. And secondly, of course, there is a gender dimension. Um, girls are given more and more uh, educational resources and expectations in China nowadays. Um, I strongly recommend that if you are interested, read that article. Uh, I can sh I can um, share with you later. Um, in terms of um, the data that you uh, mentioned, um, first of all, um, the family. Uh, you mean the divorce rate is too high? Is it that you are concerned? The, the married, not the divorce the rate is opposite the 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 parents who are married oh married it's 94 percent you think it's too high <laughs> i think it's very high because yeah I, i'm not sure whether whether this is true or not oh uh, well um demographic uh studies find that actually um in china um the divorce rate is not as high as we observe in big cities, for example, and especially in in, in consideration of um, uh, the link between par uh, between parenthood and uh, and uh, um, 
and uh, marriage, right, in China, especially with the hukou institution, you have to have you have to marry to get to get a a, a kind of permission from the uh, relative departments to have a child. At least that's um, before. And in recent years, it has been undergoing change changes, but. Um, I would say this is a reliable statistic. Um, in terms of uh, you, you say that it's the married parents are less likely to be emotionally to rate high emotional value, right? Um, but it's not it's not uh, statistically significant. So the um, yeah, I have to clarify. Those with red boxes are statistically significant. Okay, so, I, I guess. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I believe Jin has a question. Jin, would you like to speak up? Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, great presentation, Sharon. Very good. Yeah. I have a question about a key concept in the value of children okay. uh, that I didn't hear uh, much about in your in, in your. Uh, presentation, and that is the instrumental value of the children uh, means that parents expect something in return mm. from children. That mm. that's what it basically means. That it, they expect them to, you know, um, uh, pay back to them uh, when they grow up and are making money, and they take care of them when they they during the in their old age. That's the more reciprocal concept right. uh, behind the instrumental value of children. The emotional um, concept is less of a, you know, you don't expect much in return. You're having the kids because uh, you enjoy having kids and much more of a altruistic um, motivation of having kids. Uh, of course, that doesn't really mean that either of them, um, they may have different behavior uh, in parenting, but uh, a lot of that, as you, you have shown, is driven by uh, parents' social economic status, mm -hmm. you know, their income and education. But okay. uh, you didn't talk about how these different orientation, one is expecting more returns, that's instrumental. The other is not really, you know, I'm just, I have kids because I love them or uh, how is this impacting what you have uh, been talking about here about, you know, parenting behavior and so on. Thank you very much, Prof. Yang. Um, um, yes, I, Agree that these two dimensions measure uh, measure very different aspects of uh, parental value. Um, the first part, the emotional value, is more uh, altruistic considerations, whereas the uh, latter four items, for example, here, increase my sense of responsibility, have someone to help me when I get old carry on the family name and help my family economically, strengthening connection with relatives. Well, these are very important aspects of uh, parental values, especially in, in line with Confucianism uh, when talking about having children. But um, maybe I, maybe I misrepresented misrep um, the data here. Um, actually, these dimensions are in the value, in the value in the emotional value variable because I used uh, I used the, uh, the, the two dimensions I subjected the instrumental value from the emotional value so mm -hmm. generating a continuous variable so yeah. uh, from um, two extremes from one uh, of the instrumental side and to the emotional side. No. It's actually part of the story, I think. I, I, I understand the uh, measure, um, of course, and uh, how you are using it. Uh, I'm not questioning the validity of the measure. I am asking you, uh, when parents have higher instrumental value versus lower, what does that 
do to them? How does it affect their parenting behavior? Because that's the key concept, right? That's you expect you have kids because you expect them to uh, do something for you versus you don't. And how does that affect parenting behavior? I would guess if um, somehow I can't explain it now, but I would guess that um, if because it's in the same variable, right? So higher emotional value means more intensive parenting. Um, you try to um, think in terms of long-term long -term, uh, effect or, or long-term prosperity of the, of the child and the family. But if you want to emphasize, um, for those parents who emphasize the instrumental values more, I would say probably they would prefer um, a more short-term return. Um, maybe uh, let the child um, work early and uh, more other aspects of um, um, outcomes from the child, from the children. I, I don't know whether I have explained it or, or not, but I would definitely think about this issue. Um, next time I will talk to you about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Du, uh, du for, the, for this very inspiring talk. And uh, thank you for all for your participation. Uh, let's meet uh, next time. Bye bye. Thank you, Dr. Dean. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.